I've got a son of t-shirt on, which means we're going to be talking about these. These two new sensors, and believe me, I tried to do this. Hey guys, the release of Son of Elite has brought some changes. Changes to the appearance of the Elite series and the new relay designs, which to be fair, they're quite welcome because the relays and the new sensors no longer feel dated. I have the new sensors in here and probably you might have them too since it's been a couple of weeks since they've got released. But I only got some time around now to cover them on my channel. So what I do have is the latest iteration of the Zigbee button and the temperature and humidity sensor, both in the same form factor and both, well... Do they bring anything else than a redesign? Well, let's see if they are actually better. So what is new? Obviously the round shape, but at first they feel quite bulky in size, especially thickness. But once I compare them to original sensor, it's actually not that bad. It's only a couple of millimeters thicker, but there is a significant change. Now both sensors inside come with a new battery. And if you remember my original a video about the Son of Zigbee series, I already praised the Son of for including much thicker battery. It was already CR2450 included in every single Son of Zigbee sensor. And now the battery is even thicker. They're using CR2477, which is a 1100 milliamp coin cell battery with advertised lifespan of four years. Obviously, I'm not going to test the advertised lifespan myself because you'd be watching this video in four year time. But what I'm going to test and tell you is if these are actually quite good and whether you should pick those over the previous Zigbee sensors from Sonoff. But before I hook them up to my corresponding system, let's take a peek inside because the battery isn't the only change. Previously, these were using CC2530AC to handle Zigbee communication. Now we've moved up in a microcontroller list and we have EFR32MG22C22, a microcontroller that will handle Zigbee 3.0. It means they're going to be more compatible with everything else out there. And apart from adding them to devices like either iHost, which I covered in this video there, or Son of Zigbee Bridge, you'll be able to directly link them to devices like Alexa or Google Home with the Zigbee Hubs built in. So hopefully, apart from the compatibility, it should also improve the way uh, your routers connect with the new sensors too. So fingers crossed for that, right? So to use them, you're going to need a Zigbee hub, but I use Custom Coordinator for testing these. Why? Well, mainly because of the EWI-Link uh, limitation. Now, if you connect a Zigbee temperature and humidity sensor to an EWI-Link application, yes, you will be able to see a current temperature, but that temperature is going to be stored in hourly intervals, which is not good if you just want to compare how good these sensors are versus the older generation. So I promptly connected it to my custom coordinator. I'm currently running on Son of Zigbee Dongle Plus, if you want to know more, it's there and started to evaluate these over several days. And here are my findings. First, there is a Zigbee button, also coded as SNZB01P. The new generation have the P at the end in the model number. It's priced at $9.90, which is only around $2 more than the previous generation. It's nicer looking and it comes with that metal magnetic tab that you can use to actually uh, put the sensor in place, pack in place, or take it uh, with you at will. And the way I'm using it as a button to disable all the lights in my room when I'm living. Now you have three options available. Now you have a single click, which in my case just turns on the lights in a hallway just out there. I have a double click to turn all the lights in the hallway. And when I press and hold it, it should deactivate all the lights in my apartment. It's very handy for when I'm leaving and I want to make sure that everything is disconnected and I don't want to run around my apartment and turning things off. So that's how I'm using it and those three actions are available for you to match to your custom actions, whether using Home Assistant, Link, or other like Node-RED in my case. Let's get that light back. Alexa, living room lamp on. 
Now that this is fixed, let's talk about the button a little bit more. You'll notice that I have a power button label on it. And this is because the pack comes with six different stickers that you can apply to your button. Now, previous one had just like fingerprint imprint on it, which was barely visible. And if you wanted to get creative with labeling them, you'd have to do it yourself. So I definitely appreciate the fact that I included six different stickers. If you want to get more creative, obviously you can create your own. The button is uh, nice and clickable. I don't have any problems with it and it's very responsive. So yeah, it's definitely worth getting this, even if it's just for extra custom stand and extra vinyl stickers that you can apply to the button itself. After all, it's only $2 and honestly, the battery itself inside is gonna cost around that. Where it gets more interesting, it's obviously the latest temperature and humidity sensor and that they offer coded as SN02P. Again, P is for the new series. And just as before, there are two metrics available. You have humidity and temperature that this sensor is gonna measure. Now, while I appreciate the new design, I have to say that the square design, even though it looks dated, it was quite handy because you could put the sensor onto the surface and it was kind of my favorite go-to sensor when it comes to placing things on top of frames, wooden frames, whether it's a doll frame or picture frame or whatever, and hiding these sensors this way because they're white and they're barely visible. Now it's gonna be slightly more difficult with these, but thanks to included the metal plate and magnetic elements that help you to hold this in place, you'll have new options previously not available uh, on the sensors. But you're probably here to find out is it actually better. Unlike with this one, I couldn't find really any information on the PCB about what kind of sensor they used, but the product documentation reveals that they use STH40 sensor, which is fairly accurate. And I've hooked up both of them, put them next to each other for a couple of days and monitored my temperature and humidity uh, for, you know, changes. And, well, is it better? As you can look at the temperature graph, they are identical. They were reporting in a very similar fashion across, so you don't have to worry about discrepancies between two of the sensors in terms of the temperature, because they perform identically. Now, when it comes to humidity, however, I had some discrepancies. Now, I don't know what happened in my original sensor, because when I hooked it up, I've noticed that it started reporting a 10% more, 11% more than this sensor. I quickly confirmed that with Agera sensor, which is just in there in terms of humidity, and it was reporting at the same values as the latest sensor from um, Sonoff. So I quickly recalibrated uh, the old sensor to see whether all the reportings would be uh, lining up again and once again I discovered that they report exactly in the same fashion meaning that whether you're going to choose the older sensor or newer sensor you are going to get pretty accurate readings as long as your sensor is calibrated. There is a one more metric you are interested in other than accuracy of the humidity and temperature metrics which is how often do they report. On average, the reporting time would be about 25 minutes when the temperature isn't fluctuating that much and both sensors would report back instantly the moment I started to uh, blow warm air onto the sensor, reporting new temperature and humidity values. In that regard, I found them to be super responsive and if you want to know how they stack versus the most common typical temperature and humidity sensors that I found so far, I compared the original sensors against 11 other sensors and that's in this video. And since they pretty much the same in terms of reporting, you can translate that into a performance of the newest sensor with exception of the battery, which, well, let's face it, at this stage, it's gonna last forever. The new temperature sensor costs $10.90, which is slightly more expensive, just over $2 than the original ones. But considering that extra battery, I think it's a price worth paying just to buy yourself a bit of, you know, uh, peace of mind that uh, you won't have to monitor this battery for years to come. But in case you do worry about your sensors and you do want to know when your sensors are letting you down, if you check this video, and that will show you on how to monitor your Zigbee sensors in a custom setup, especially using an old red, and how to get notified when something is not right and the sensor is it reporting. So I've created that project some time ago and I'll strongly recommend you to check it out and maybe implement it in your system. 
I guess this brings us to the end of the video, in which I will leave you with this thought. There are still two different sensor types, APR and contact sensors that work over Zigbee that haven't been translated to the new design. And something tells me we're gonna see them sooner or later. But what is already coming up, it's, well, it's a surprise at this point and I'm not allowed to talk about it, but I have it in there in my drawer being tested as we speak. So do stick around to find out. Right guys, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, you know how YouTube works. If you want to follow me and all of that, you also know how YouTube works. So there's a couple of social media links listed down below. Follow me there and start a conversation with me. As for now, what can I say? I'm going to see you in the next video. So take care and bye. <laughs> this is difficult. I can do this, but I won't be able to say anything. Maybe I can't do this. I can't.